our observations of sun activity and the small dwarf star presently within our solar system has been reported worldwide either early morning rising with the sun or setting with the sun, leading to many YouTube uploads of the new phenomenon. Our own observations range from Australia to northern Europe, in Germany and in the United Kingdom, from Scotland to the English Channel. In Germany, the Pinneberg webcam has captured the changing nature of it over the five days we managed to capture the videos. The date, the 24th of June, 2013, that should be, not 12, the dwarf was following the line of the horizon, a brilliant white light which appears to be a similar colour to a full moon. Here it is, June 24th, 2013, 3.24.02 a.m., hugging the horizon. It appeared uh, a little after 2 o'clock, 2 a.m. to the left of the screen and then just maintained its low orbit there, hugging the horizon. And there's the ghost, if you like, of a, a planet above the horizon there, circled. This is at 3.40. You can see the light beginning to diffuse and just look how bright the sky is. Sunrise for the week beginning June 24th was from 4.51, 4.52, 4.53. So well over an hour and ten minutes at least later than this um, light that's lighting the sky. Here's the shadow of the planet again, or the hint, the ghost of the planet, whatever you like to call it. This is at 3.46, just minutes later, look how bright that sky is, and you can see how the orb of light itself is now totally diminished, not to be seen. Just the hint, here it is at 4.07, still an hour, no, sorry, not an hour, 40 minutes at least before sunrise. 20, sky remaining bright, and the source of the light, it seems, just a hint, a ghost as the light diffusing throughout the, the sky remains light and bright. Now, six days later, of course, on the 30th of June, look how they are chemtrailing. This is early in the morning, 6.29 a.m., the beginning of heavy chemtrailing. These chemtrails would end up being the cover for the setting sun and the sunrise the next morning. So once we had uploaded this some days ago, then the voltage started dumping chemtrails, but too late we'd capture the wavelength changing and the dwarf vanishing. Now what a world we would have if honesty was all there was. Well, that is what the Christ uh, brings you, straight up truth. I'll read it in the first person. That is what I will bring you, straight up truth. A full moon is unmistakable, clear, circular, and does not hug the horizon. It will either be rising on an angle or declining, but never along the path the dwarf was travelling. The dates of the bright orb was the 24th, 25th, 26th and 27th, and along the horizon with a slightly higher path than the previous day. On the 28th it was not seen as expected, but did flare up like it had in all previous day's observations to light the sky in a flash of light and remain that way, occurring uh, up to two hours before sunrise. I estimated the distance the light was travelling through the horizon was acting like a filter. And as the object gained altitude above the horizon, it, the light from it would be travelling a shorter distance. Think of it like several filters on a camera lens. And so like removing filters from in front of a camera, the shorter, shortest path changed the light spectrum, lengthening the wavelength to be above our eyesight. Pinneberg, Germany, webcam on the 24th, we observed, as you saw, we observed the bright light moving along the horizon, then suddenly expand, then dim, followed by a small fading dot where the centre would be, and then a flash of light illuminating this. That should be illuminating the sky like daylight. How do you do these things, don't you? Just leave them there waiting for me to catch them and when I don't. <laughs> they come as a surprise. Okay, so our saints from around the world report animals behaving in strange ways, that's for sure. Chickens, bred not to fly, are flying.
Cats and dogs behaving on oddly. Farm animals attempting to get through the fences. And in one report, our dear friend from Mandurang, Victoria, near Melbourne, a cat that is always outside clamouring to get into the house or climbing on top of the roof that was frozen and at about uh, minus, well, uh, yeah, 11 degrees Celsius, much colder than the media was reporting. Uh, they were reporting about minus one, yet her thermometer was showing us way colder than that. As usual, false information. Now, we had observed the sun in Antarctic car and Coolum Beach, Queensland, of the last two years. The sun would grow brighter over 10 minute periods to flare up each hour, then dim and repeat the cycle. The new dwarf object appears to be still south of the sun, and I expect it will fulfil prophecy and move between the Earth and the sun when the northern hemisphere uh, becomes unbearably hot. We are limited by our equipment. The governments know exactly what is occurring and have successfully silenced over a hundred astronomers, men who work in pairs. Suddenly one dies and a week later his partner on the other side of the earth dies. Sadly this does one thing, it indicates that we are correct and this has been going on for how many years? At least 20 years. Mm. Now we can look at prophecy and gain some insight of what the prophecy was physically alerting us to. Usually a prophecy is told in parables and are to be like rather than specific. Like Jesus coming in the clouds riding a white horse is not a man sitting on a 5,000 foot high horse. <laughs> a white horse biblically means great power. You may recall seeing the Queen riding a white horse in a parade. Saddam Hussein, yes, all of the uh, Napoleon, all of the leaders in the... Yeah. The word cloud simply means confusion or obscurity. It's a cloud is a veil to something that's veiling what is, what is already there. Clouds of heaven, likewise, point to the obscurity or confusion of what we are now seeing, abnormal things to say the least. So with these explanations in mind, I will list a few parables. Clouds of heaven first mentioned in Daniel in a vision. Therefore, from then on, we must remember the words of Daniel. Quoting, I saw in the night visions, and behold, one, like the Son of Man, came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him. 6051 from 6049, a cloud as covering the sky, and from an unused root meaning to be lofty, the sky as a loft, the dual including alluding to the visible arch in which the clouds move, as well as to the higher ether where the celestial bodies revolve. Air, astrologer, heavens. A covering or astrologer or celestial bodies, as in stars being numerous, and in astrology, clouds of heaven. The Ancient of Days, of course, is the Almighty. The God of Daniel was Yahweh, and Daniel was an Essene. He was not a Jew. Clouds of heaven, Matthew 26, 64, quoting, Jesus saith unto him, Thou hast said, Nevertheless I say unto you, Hereafter shall ye see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power, and coming in the clouds of heaven. And that's the same as Daniel's son of man. Right hand means the power of God, the soul in the Christ today. The term Lord of hosts is a direct reference to the Lord of the heavens, the celestial stars. And then from Mark 14:61, quoting, But he held his peace and answered nothing. Again the high priest asked him and said unto him, Art thou the Christ, the Son of the Blessed? Verse 62, And Jesus said, I am, and ye shall see the Son of Man sitting on the right hand of power and coming in the clouds of heaven. The word Christ is a prediction of what Jesus and Yahweh coming back with all the power of the Creator in the final stage of the second coming being the Almighty called Christ. Next, the sun will not be needed and the moon will not give its light. This can physically occur when the dwarf sun moves in front of the sun and blocks the sun's light so that the light from the sun will not shine upon the moon. The moon at 235,000 miles from the earth. A total eclipse of the sun means we can estimate the width of the dwarf and how close to the earth it would have to be to stop light reaching the full moon 
as in not give its light prophecy, must be only during a full moon. Otherwise, it would give some light in the orbit. So the orbit width is twice 235,000 miles, or 470,000 miles. Therefore, the dwarf has to be massive, considering the sun is 864,000 miles across. Now, NASA sent a rocket into Jupiter some years ago to try and ignite the hydrogen and start nuclear fusion, turning hydrogen into helium. Their attempt failed, as Jupiter at 88,800 miles wide was not, has not enough mass. Therefore, the dwarf is around 94,200 miles wide and is in the process of fusion. Prophecy, prophecy states three days of darkness. Therefore, if we take it to mean two days and half a day, as suggested as a time, time and half a time, then the moon would have to be on the far side of the earth to be a full moon and be blocked out by a dwarf solar eclipse. An estimated Jupiter-sized planet close to the earth by astronomers, but larger as mentioned. The size difference between 88,800 miles and 94,200 miles is 5,400 miles. We have then the continuing math of creation. Jesus 888, Greek Demetria. Jesus, the 942 verse total of the KJV 1611 Bible. And 5400 is the age difference between myself and my half-sister, June, born, that should be the 18th of August, 1938. I, I, I made that correction on another slide. What happened? <laughs> anyway, so her name was June, but she was actually born August the 18th, 1938. You'll see that in the next slide. She, incidentally, was fathered by my mother's husband, and was my, as was my brother. I am their half-brother. This is because the Virgin Mary conceived of the Holy Spirit of the Almighty, myself, as God cannot have a father. Likewise, my mother Daphne conceived of the Holy Ghost. We'll see the difference in a minute. Being Jesus, myself, returned as the same soul that was conceived as the Holy Spirit. So, the soul of Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit first time in Mary. But this time because he is the Holy Ghost, the resurrected soul of Jesus, he is conceived of the Holy Ghost. So that's the difference. That is the difference. So just a, a comment. The martial side of the equation is an abomination. The go lightly side, righteous. We see the Bible writers or translators either deliberately used a word incorrectly, as the original is spirit, as seen in the concordance, but ghost in the verse. The reason is to cause the reader not to get the point a ghost is the soul after death, not before, as in the ghost being the power or soul of God conceived within Mary. Luke one thirty five. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee. Wrong. It's spirit, not ghost. This is before the ghost, before the death on the cross, before the ghost left the body. And the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore, also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. So you can see in the Greek dictionary, 4151, ghost, a current of air, breath, or a breeze, by analogy, a spirit, human, the rational soul, by implication, vital principle, mental disposition, and etc. Or superhuman, an angel, demon, or divine God, Christ, spirit, the Holy Spirit, ghost, life, spirit, mind, compare, 5590. So the ghost is the soul of Jesus that left from the cross, as the body drained of blood, being where the soul resided, then returned, so that the ghost returned, passing through the cloth in which the corpse or bloodless flesh was laid out in the tomb. So the Holy Ghost is the resurrected, it's the soul, the soul of Jesus. Thus leaving the burned image on the outside of the shroud and is why the image is 171 inches by 39.5 inches. Teslin, 
In Hebrew, 6754.5 square inches. 5 is father. 6754 is ghost, image, teslam. A phantom, that is resemblance, image. The soul left. So the soul had already left from the cross. It was gone out of the body at the cross. No blood left to dwell within as the spear proved, showing water ran out after just a few drops of blood. Mary conceived not of a ghost, but of the following. Divine God, Christ, Spirit, the Holy Spirit, life, Spirit, immortal soul of God himself, the only immortality. Yah's drawn a picture here to demonstrate the soul out from the cross and then the soul back through the outside of the shroud. Now scientists assume is the burned image on the cloth against the body. It's all wrong and that's why they always show the spear on the right side of the cloth. It's not. Of course the spear went through the heart where the heart is on his left. So you can, you can actually demonstrate that yourselves at home. Draw some red paint on the left side of the heart, on the outside of your shirt, take it off, turn it around and look at it, and you'll think it's on the right side, but we've done this. <laughs> Fiji on the floor. <laughs> Fiji. Yes, you remember? <laughs> In our uh, cottage there, overlooking the coral sea, I made you get down and we, we reenacted the, the shroud all over again. <laughs> we drew on the outside of the sheet. <laughs> oh, yeah. So my half-brother and sister had the morals of Sodom and Gomorrah passed on to their offspring from my grandfather. At the age of 26, he seduced a 14-year-old. She became pregnant out of wedlock, gave birth. Then his son, my stepfather, history repeated, my mother at 13 was set upon by this son. She became pregnant and they married like father, like son. This brought their firstborn illegitimate son, a pervert, low-life, immoral bastard. His adult life, married with four children, was unimportant as his obsession was frequenting brothels. He passed this obsession to his two sons, Stephen and Michael. He contributed little to me, not even a witness to miracles he had observed of me as a child and would deny continually, which heightened my awareness of lies of convenience. One thing though, he was born 8.88 years before I. Now their part was to alert me to what the minds of the perverted dream about. To reveal the antics of these monsters would make Harold Robbins' books pale into insignificance. I skimmed one of his books and the homosexual pornography stunned me. He is after all one of the men Hitler would have dealt with. However, my half-sister, born 1972 weeks before me, 5.4 years being the point, 942 less 888 is 54. Greek 1972 from 1971, Epipotheo from 1909, and Potheo to yearn, that is intensely crave possession, wrongfully, earnestly desire, greatly lust. My brother at 8.88 Years older than I tells a similar story. The number 888 in Hebrew from 887, Borash, to be offensive morally, make to be a board, had in abomination, loathsome, utterly. Now back to business. Prophecy states three days of darkness, therefore if we take it to mean two days and a half a day, as suggested as a biblical time, time and a half a time, then the moon would have to be on the far side of the earth to be a full moon and be blocked out by a dwarf solar eclipse. An estimated Jupiter-sized planet, 88,800 miles, is slightly too small, but at 94,200 miles is ideal. The size difference, 5,400 miles a clue. It's all sacred numbers. We have then the continuing math of creation, Jesus 888, Greek gematria, and Jesus 942 verse total, and 5.4 years, the age difference between myself and my half-sister, half born August the 18th, 1938. That's where I made the correction. <laughs> there it is, June, her name, born August 18th, 1938.
It is, isn't it? The moon travels across the sky at roughly 2,300 miles per hour. So in two and a half days, the distance is 60 hours at 2,300 miles per hour is 138,000 miles. And as the dwarf sun has been suggested, Jupiter-sized, mentioned from reliable astronomers, it has to be orbiting close to the Earth. We can estimate how far it has to be, considering gaining 10 minutes per day minimum from observations of its horizontal passage as seen from Pinneberg, Germany. 88,800 divided by 138,000, approximately 0.6434. In Hebrew, this number 6434, pen or pain, means to turn. The sun is 9.7 times wider than 88,800 miles, so we can estimate how far from the Earth it has to be maximum. 972 is violent or mighty. This places it at 8,100,000 miles from Earth, but is not large enough to become a sun. The next width large enough to be a dull sun, is 94,200 miles wide. And this places it at 8,138,000 miles distance. 8138 days equals 11.6, sorry, 1162.6 weeks and is the pyramid antechamber width of 116.26 pyramid inches. And I married when I was 11... 62.6 62.6 weeks old to the harlot of Lithgow on April the 23rd, 1966. Hebrew 8138 is shor nor, do or return the second time. And here I just want to say, hello! <laughs> Assuming it will be crossing the sun's surface at 10 minutes per day, means it will start to cool the rays of the sun every day until it blocks it for two and a half days. And as we cannot (laughs) see the spectrum of the dwarf, nor will we see the sun, the sky will glow light. Isaiah 13 verse 10, For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light, the sun shall be darkened, in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. Isaiah 16:19, The sun shall be no more thy light by day, neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee, but the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light, and thy God thy glory. Thy sun shall no more go down, neither shall thy moon withdraw itself. For the Lord shall be thine everlasting light, and the days of thy mourning shall be ended. The Lord 942, and no need of the sun, does not mean it is not there. What it means is the light that benefits the earth will be the same light we observed in Europe, rising at 3 a.m., before sunrise by two hours or more. Ezekiel 32, 7 And when I shall put thee out, I will cover the heaven and make the stars thereof dark. I will cover the sun with a cloud, and the moon shall not give her light. Matthew 24, 29 Immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened, And the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Mark 13, 24, but in those days, after that tribulation, the sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light. The Greek dictionary 13, 24, is didumos, prolongation from 13, 64, which is double, that is twin, sun. So the stars will not give their light. Why? Well, the sky we observed at the sudden flash of light from the dwarf causes the air molecules to glow and obscure anything above the atmosphere. So no stars could be seen. 
The moon will still be there, but will not reflect this light from the dwarf. The twin, the Lord Star, as the sun is about to go out, indicated by the light increasing over an hour we had observed in Antarctica and Coolon, Queensland, indicating a burnout. These parables are truth, but when a nation is indoctrinated with, in particular, elected governments, this causes the psych to rest in the assurance of, quoting, if it were not so, they would tell us. Add to the pot, all religions are in agreement, and the ever-truthful news media, media always will report truth, is about as logical as allowing foxes to protect a chicken coop. Again, we can quote the New Testament Gospels, but only if the same rules apply. What then is truth? Wilderness or 40 days in the desert. A reference to Moses tramping around the desert waiting for the tribes of Israel to finally become righteous, which they never did. And eventually he stopped on Mount Nebo overlooking Palestine and refused to cross the Jordan. He said they were unworthy and there he died. Then a little editing by the scribes and after his passing they crossed over and stole the land. Then there was Jesus in the desert for 40 days. Myself could not convince them either. The same who rules today, the enemies of Hitler. He also demonised, and personally for me, he is one of the greatest men in history. Saw the problem, stood up and declared it, then was lured into World War II by England. They ruled by the same evil he accused of ruining Christianity with their pornography and homosexuality. Now I've said before, 3168 is derived from the word David, being English gematria. 4 being the letter David, 1 being the letter A, 22 is V, 9 is I, and 4 again for D, multiplied by each other equals 3168, or added is 40. And therein you have the Lord Jesus Christ in Greek gematria. Lord 800, Jesus 888, Christ 1480, add them all together and you get 3168. So on January 11th, 2014, my 70th birth date, Benedict XVI will be 31,680 days old. There is the 3168. And so he being my reincarnated half-brother Peter the Rock, the following applies. 31680 days is 86.74 years. 8674 is the total number of words listed in the Hebrew concordance of the James Strong's 1830 dictionary. Concordance of the Hebrew and Greek language. The age difference between myself and Benedict as he came to the earth at conception is 18.68 years. That number, 1868, is Darius, the Persian king who rebuilt the temple to Yahweh. The Hebrew highest number, as said, the last number in the Hebrew concordance is 8674 a Persian king named Tatnai. That name is found in four verses, Ezra 5.3, 5.6, 6.6 and 6.13. So four times 18.68 is 7.4.7.4 and in Hebrew is love and 74 is Jesus, English Demetria, as is Joshua, the Hebrew name of Jesus. Can it get any more perfect? <laughs> Matthew 16, 18. What have we got? 1618 is the Fibonacci number. Quoting, And I say also unto thee, Benedict, thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. 
Verse 19, And I will give unto thee, Benedict, the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou, Benedict, shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou, Benedict, shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Translate to today. The Vatican is the gates of hell, all entirely run by homosexuals and those filthy dogs Hitler rightly accused as do I. Then what was said in the next verse? Verse 20, Then charged he, his disciples, that they should tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. Verse 21, From that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples how that he must go unto Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again the third day. Benedict then told the world and the world turned on him. I knew he would as it had occurred in the past. It must occur again so I said nothing. There is no blame. It is how it had to be. It flushed out Lucifer, George or Georg Ganswein. Those of you who have been following these uploads are aware Benedict is a prisoner in the Vatican. His greatest friend, Father Giuseppe Ciavello, kidnapped and missing, as is Benedict's biographer, who was privy to his proclaiming he had met with Christ, Sister Maria della Rosa. It was all planned out by the enemies of Hitler hundreds of years before, a slow progressive advance into Christian lands where they would seek to destroy the Jesus nations, converting them into tattooed odd beings performing endless abominations with all forms of perversions. This is why Hitler's enemies were kicked out of 80 nations who fell for the poor me con. The same evil Hitler accused of ruining Christianity with their pornography and homosexuality. Now how do we know Lucifer is not Francis? He is just a moron. The cardinals are all part of the plot. The man in the most dominating position is Ganswein. He, a man Pope Benedict trusted absolutely, more like a son than a secretary, did all the paperwork. Had Benedict sign authorising what he wanted done? Tore up anything that would clear out the filth in the church and say nothing. He is Lucifer. It is easy enough to see today, Benedict is locked up for declaring he has met Christ. Myself, Morgan Schwein, supports Francis, who was prompted to lock Benedict up and kidnapped his staff. Therefore, if Gan Swine were genuine, he would not support Francis. He is not only one of them, he is the key player. He knows what happened. We also have emails from him. It is the Cain and Abel story. Cain represents Gan Swine and Abel, Father Giuseppe. Abel was murdered by his brother. However, he has reincarnated as Giuseppe and cannot die again. That is not to say he will not be suffering, held in a box under the Vatican. Of that there is no doubt. However, the angels take one's place, and although his jailers see Giuseppe, it is his angel, and he, Giuseppe, is safe. Revelation 3.12 him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. This verse has a value of 2520 in English to Matria, if it were days, it is precisely seven years times ten is seventy years, and that date is January 11, 2014, when Pope Benedict XVI, new name Petrus Romanus, or Peter of Rome II, the reincarnate of Peter, my half brother, he will be 31680 days old on that date. My new name, Brian, 44, Leonard, 69, Golightly, 115, Marshall, 84, is the verse number 312. They all add up to 312. I rename Pope Benedict, 16th Peter of Rome, the second. 
after I made him aware he was my half-brother, the first son of Mary, his father Joseph ben Jacob, the king of Judah. Read carefully, he that overcometh. Who is he? The number, three, one, two. The number of the name. And as Jesus said these words via the angel Michael to John on the Isle of Patmos on April the 6th, 96 AD, it is a time warp of speech. The Father in Jesus sent the angel to predict the one the soul of Jesus, Yahweh, would be in. And he, Yahweh, would via the Jesus angel inform the future as yet unborn Christ of the promise. When a woman conceives, and the same applies for animals, her womb retains a memory of the first conception. So in my case, my physical appearance was similar to my mother's husband, Reginald Marshall. From the day I was reborn, he hated me. He thought he was not the father and that his brother Jack was, as they looked alike. Daphne had committed adultery in his mind. My mother told me her obstetrician said she was not to have any more children as she had a kidney problem causing her to be kept in the hospital for 13 weeks with her second child, June. The doctor was amazed at the 11-month gestation of myself as the last intercourse was February 1943 on the 5th, which she remembered precisely, being an idiot savant like I am with dates and numbers. The reality is it was a conception by the Holy Ghost of Jesus. Mary had myself the Immaculate Conception, then Simon Peter, three other sons and two daughters. Benedict is Simon Peter, reincarnate. Think logically. The entire world is predicted to reject the Lord when he comes. And likewise, anyone who accepts me as the Lord, in particular the Pope, the head of the 1.2 billion Catholics, is the most devastating event in history for the world elite, who are totally Zionist. This is why the Vatican is totally demonic, homosexuals at all levels, and the demon Paul, John Paul II is entombed in a lead-lined cedar box, his coffin raised from the pit and placed in an altar in the Vatican, watched 24-7 via a webcam, and church officials pray every morning to this piece of shit to resurrect. His soul is in hell, and that is where they will join him. That you can take to the Vatican Bank, and as for the Vatican, its days are numbered. Now these are reminders of the emails coming directly from Pope Benedict's personal email at first contact, which was Monday, the 11th of March, 2013, Australian time. Pope Benedict's email started on Monday morning on the 11th of March, 2013. My astronomy program calculates the distance from the sun to the nine planets at any moment. Keep in mind the email was from the Pope. The average distance to the planets in astronomical units was 11.1655555. Lunation 11.16 began on March the 11th and add 16 days to Lunation 11.16.5555 and it is March the 27th, 2013. It reveals an average of 11.166666 being the Lord verse total 6666 in the KJV 1611 and the Christ verse total, the Christ number total within 522 verses. 555 times the word Christ is found within 522 verses and 522 is the mother. Now, here it is, 11th of March 2013, averages 
March 27th. Inertia 1116 and the Lord verse total 6666. Pope Benedict was frustrated. He had arthritic pain throughout his body. He'd fallen and broken his wrist while visiting Mexico the year before. He told me he was disgusted by what he was unable to rid the church of. Not suspecting for a moment it was Pope John Paul II and later his secretary, the trusted friend, Gail Gain Swain, all along. He told me of the filth in the church dominated by homosexual power in the Vatican. Luke 11.22, but when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him, he taketh from him all his armour wherein he trusted and divideth his spoils. Greek Dictionary 11.22 from 11.21, a writer that is professionally scribe or secretary. Scribe. Pope Benedict was unaware he had been charged, tried and sentenced to 25 years for the crimes of the church, crimes from child abuse and murder, child slave trade, homosexual perversions and genocide after the, over the last two centuries. That was the uh, ITCC debacle. His efforts to prosecute perpetrators were mysteriously stopped. In fact, one of the worst child abuse cases, this was this... Um, Baltimore. He ended up being in the Diocese of Baltimore, but um, that Marcial, Mar whatever his name was, a, a Spanish-sounding uh, name who started the uh, Legions of Christ or something. With a long proven record of abuses, Pope John Paul II had proposed making this monster a saint. Yes, the prosecution of this dude during his reign had been stopped. This is when Benedict was heading up the department to go after these monsters was stopped, and then uh, John Paul II had proposed to make this monster a saint. So it was told me by His Holiness that he did not have any contact de details for anyone, including the Swiss Guard, who was sworn to defend him under all circumstances. It became apparent he signed papers in some cases to proceed with abuse cases, yet nothing came of it. So what was actually happening? Papers were set before him by his secretary of Luke 11.22 and he would sign and his secretary would take the documents to the departments or send them by mail. And here we have the reality. George Ganswain, the agent for the homosexual infiltration behind the Vatican, would prevent any further action. 11, Revelation 11.16 and the four and twenty elders which sat before God on their seats fell upon their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art and wast and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power and hast reigned. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead that they should be judged, and that thou shouldst give reward unto thy servants, the prophets, and to the saints and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldst destroy them which destroy the earth. And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament, and there were lightnings and voices and thunderings and an earthquake and great hail. So July the 8th, just six days from today, 2013, ends lunation 11 19, aligning with the Revelation 11, 19, and the end of Revelation. There's a reminder from the last upload that we did, revealing Lucifer in the Vatican, George Gant Swain. These are the personal communications to the Christ, beginning their time, March Sunday, March 10th. Hello, this is Archbishop George, personal secretary. His Holiness. Yes, the Pope is asleep and will check your answers to his questions first thing when he wakes up. I'm very sorry for the confusion. He was sitting at the computer the whole night and early morning, anticipating your responses. We are sorry he cannot see them now. There was the Pope up, waiting, communicating with the Christ, eager to hear what you have to say. He fell asleep at the computer. <laughs> and here he is. This is the 
My name, it, the, the last line reads, My name is Sister Maria Della Rosa. I hope the Holy Father make this biography. She was the one who sent this photo of George Ganswain and uh, Father Giuseppe Giovello. Here is a photograph taken by George Ganswain and sent to us a photo from after the Holy Father's Rosary walk when we were returning home. And of course he's right beside Lake Albano in the Castel Gandolfo, overlooks Lake Albano and we ourselves are just one kilometre from the lake in this place where we are living. And here is Father Giuseppe Cervello, ordained priest on August the 5th, 1998. Missing, reported dead by the thugs working for Francis. Nobody doing anything. Sister Maria Della Rosa said to be sent out of the country. He's missing. Just going over uh, the previous video a little. So the Pope was 2496 when Giuseppe was born. Now re remember, uh, Pope Benedict referred to Giuseppe as my good friend and confidant, Don Giovanni Cervello. So he was born February 17, 1975. So the night that Giuseppe was taken away, he was 1989 weeks old. And to enjoin by writing, to communicate by letter for any purpose, write a letter unto. So he not only wrote to us through the personal messaging on the Facebook, but he was the one that translated the Italian apostolic letter that the Pope originally wrote the apostolic letter in Italian. Then Giuseppe saw it and he was the one that says, oh, it's got to be in English. <laughs> so he got permission from the Holy Father to translate it into English for us, and of course there was a delay of 55 hours and 38 minutes for him to do that, because he would have done it to perfection, not, not uh, Google Translate. <laughs> but anyway, there was a delay that he was so, so sorry and upset about, but it uh, of course was all perfection. And so, um, so February 17th, 1975 to April 3rd, the, the, the day he was taken, he was 38.12 years old. And it means from infancy of a child, and in Hebrew is to make disgusted. And yes, he was very disgusted with what was going on in the Vatican. He said to me that it needed cleaning up, absolutely. And of course, from a child, he was uh, born for this role. So he is safe. Able. A lot of Abel cries out. Well, here it is, the 55, minutes and 30, 55 hours and 38 minute delay, uh, and it means in the Greek dictionary a divine response, answer of God. And going over, here we see how the angels manipulate the righteous to achieve a divine message. Father Giuseppe asked the Pope Benedict XVI if he could translate the apostolic letter from Italian to English, so we would communicate it to our followers and spread it worldwide. And 55 hours, and that should be 38 minutes, not 33. It's my editing on Mr. <laughs> says it all. An answer of God, a divine response. Okay, this is going on a little bit. Now, finishing with the devil does not have 